Hi, this is Melissa Rosander from Flutter Bear Creations. Today I'm just going to show you a really quick video, nothing too fancy, but uh, it was asked from somebody in my group that um, they wanted to know how to create the stitches that knock down the nap on a fabric such as fleece so that your lettering stands out a little bit more. So I'll show you that. Here we go. So if you'll see behind uh, the lettering on this shirt, um, there is a really fine stitching underneath all the letters that is outlining all the lettering. So it's helping to knock down the nap, the fuzziness on this particular fabric. So I'm hoping that you can tell that it's there. They obviously did this in a color that was nearly identical to the actual fabric color so that it would blend in and not really be seen. And then it helps keep down this, this fuzziness so that your letters really stand out. And it was asked how to do that. And of course you need software to do this. Um, you could potentially do this on your machine if you're really uh, patient and maybe a little crazy. Um, and you could just go back and forth if you're really precise and um, go back and back and back and back all the way across. Do the same thing over and over and over until it's all filled in and knocked down in the color you want. Same thing in there. But you would have to know exactly how large you need it before you put the letters on because that has to be done before you add your embroidery uh, letters. So um, on the machines, I don't know if there's a way to do that and set that up on the Epic, but I'm like 99.9% .9 positive that there's not a way to um, computerize that process on any of the other machines that are out there um, on the Viking or Foff side. However, this can definitely be done in software, and it depends on which software you have. If you don't have software capable, then you may need to hire a digitizer to do this um, or invest in some software, which is pretty pricey. But... Um, but worth it. I love software. <laughs> but then again, I'm kind of a computer type person, and that's my that's where I like to dwell. So, anyways, if you want this, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do this in 60 extra. If you have other versions of Viking or Foff software, um, you know your process, your screen and buttons may look differently, but it should still be capable of doing the same things. But if you open up your 60 extra or 60 Premiere software. Uh, both of them, when you initially open, will open to the 60 Extra um, home screen. So this here is 60 Extra, and 60 Premier basically adds a whole bunch of buttons down here. That's the short version of the difference. Um, these, of course, are, are your more amazing and robust tools. So if you're going to do full digitizing, I spend a lot of time in this one, 60 Design Creator. And that's where I would personally do this. But if you do not have 60 Premier level software, you can definitely uh, create this knockdown effect within 60 Extra. It's just a little bit um, more convoluted of a process, but it can be done. So I'm going to show you. So what you're going to do, so say you have your words, and you're going to import them in, or you can create your own words. So I'll show you how I did this, actually. So you go over here to the letter tab if you want to create your own words. If you already have an embroidery um, with the words on it, then you're going to go to File and Open, and you're going to scan your computer to find the file you want, and, to, and then hit Open, and it will show up in here. If you want to create your own, you'll pick a font of your choice. So you can pick anything you want. There's like tons of fonts within 60 Extra and uh, the other programs as well. Here you type your words. If you want it on two lines, type it on two lines. Um, here you're going to pick the size. This is the height of the letters that you are going to be using. So that means the T in test should be 20 millimeters high. So for this particular font, it can go between 20 to 65 millimeters is the recommended size. If you go outside of the recommended size, you are on your own territory and it may or may not work really well. Recommended size, 20 to 65 for this particular font. I'm going to make it 25 millimeters, which is an inch. Um, don't worry about these because you can play with those later if you want to arch your words and shape them and things like that. But the basic shape we're going for today, just 
go with the rectangle, it'll make it nice and straight. Then uh, I want them centered. And instead of left or right justified, I want my words centered on top of each other. I'll hit apply. So you see they centered them so that me is in the middle of test. Okay. Now, what you want to do next is go to the edit tab. And it should be 25 millimeters approximately for your biggest um, letter. Okay. And you're going to want to create the the background stitching to cover that area and really you want it to be a little bigger so say I want it to go from like here maybe the knockdown stitches to be that far of a margin above to here and you want to kind of go between the middle to get the same effect you could you could do an entire square and then you would have knockdown stitches here in the open spaces too and that's fine if you prefer that and that's the easier way to do it but to get the same effect of the picture that was shown earlier. I'm going to make a margin of roughly here to about here. And it's telling me I went 34.5 millimeters that way. And then I need to know, so I'm going to say 35 millimeters. And then I need to know how wide is the word, but you want to add your margins a little bit. So you go a little bit outside of that. Okay, so 112 roughly. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So you're looking at 112 by 33, 34, somewhere around there. Okay? I'm going to write uh, that down. All right, so I wrote that down. And then you want to do the same thing for the other word. So go kind of in the middle here for the margin and a little past it. And I'm looking at 33 by the outermost edge and add a margin 33 by 58 okay and I'll show you why you want that number in a minute here the next thing we're gonna go do is go up to the wizards tab okay now this is a tab you don't get if you have the base level software but 60 Extra and Premiere both have this. We are going to use the quilt block. We're going to create two quilt blocks. And the one we want is this one. Okay? We're not going to go around it. We want it to actually go under the wording. We're not going to fill within the wording. We're not going to make a a margin around it and we're also not going to do just the quilt block shape outline we want it filled in with knockdown stitches so we're gonna pick this one that has this whole quilt block filled in with with stitches now this shows stipple but that's just an example you're gonna go here you're gonna pick the rectangle so that you can put in your sizes okay the first rectangle this is where you need to know uh, what numbers you wrote down so I'm going to put, this is A, which refers to the horizontal width, was 112 millimeters, and B was 34 millimeters, so that should look about the right size, 34. Okay? Um, you can, it will include a cut line around it if you want to, but we don't need it for this one. So take that check mark out, hit next. So it's showing the stipple. What we want, uh, you can do anything you want, okay? But here's what I'm going to show you and recommend is the crosshatch fill. Pick that one and then go to options. We're going to make that smaller. Right now it's got a five millimeter gap. Let's make that as small as it will let us go. Okay, two millimeters. So you can play with the other settings, but it's really not necessary for this. Hit OK. So it should be nice and small. You see how tight that is? It should help. Okay. Hit finish. So there's that. You can take this and uh, move it. Keep it centered. Move it so that it's kind of in between the two. And it's right underneath. Okay. Now we're going to do the other size. 
So go back up to the quilt block. We're going to do this for the letter me. Same thing. Pick this one. The rectangle. All right, change your sizes here. For me, this was 58 by 33, or roughly. I'll do 34 because that's what I did on the last one. It'll keep it equal. Again, do the crosshatch. Change the gap to 2. And hit finish. All right, drag and drop that into place. Okay, so if you go back to the home tab, you'll see now you have three different designs. The problem is you want the red lettering or whatever color lettering you have, you want your lettering to be on top of the other two. So you're going to highlight that until your lettering color shows up. So if I do that, you get blue. If I'm hitting the tab button. I get blue tab. So hit tab button to toggle between your designs. Uh, right now, you know I have the letters because it's red. I'm going to take this, change the layout order, move it to the front so that it will test, it will stitch out rather, it will stitch on top of the rest. At this point, if it's looking really good to you, you like how that is, then you need to go to combine all, okay? And it's showing you that the blue is going to stitch first and then the lettering starts. Next, we'll hit color sort so you don't have a you know, a whole bunch of colors on there that you don't need. Um, it merges the colors. So there you have it. You've got your blue and your red. From there, you need to go to File, Export. Okay? You don't need to do any of these because we already did it manually. You want to select the file format for your machine, which for uh, FOF and Vikings, both as VP3. Hit OK. All right, and then name it. So, test knockdown. You know, name it whatever you want. Okay, export. Then when you go back out, I had it sent here. And you'll see there's my VP3 file. You can take that and send it to your machine in whatever format you prefer. I like to put it on my USB stick. Uh, if you prefer to wire it to your computer, that's okay, too. Um, I'll leave that up to you. For the purposes of this video, that's the file you need. So get it onto your machine and test it out. See if you like it. And if you like it, then put it on your final product.